All right, so this uh, this response is the one that's labeled 2006 B1. So we're just going to jump right in. Uh, so part A is wanting you to just draw the free body diagrams for each of the two masses. So it's been a while since we've done some free body diagrams, but uh, it should be pretty simple. So here we go. Uh, the, here's the first one that is labeled capital M. So what kind of forces do we have on it? Uh, we have the normal force. We have the gravitational force. And we know this, it, so this is sitting on a tabletop, so those have to be the same. We have tension going off to the right. But this one has a spring that's connected to it. So that means we also have something going off to the left that is the force from the spring. I'm going to call it Fs. And if this is in equilibrium, which means nothing is really moving, then Fs and T have to be equal to each other as well. So Fs is equal to T, and Fn is equal to Fg. All right, then the other one that we have is uh, this other mass, which is lowercase m. And with lowercase m, we only have two forces since it's hanging off the end. We have tension going up, and we have the force of gravity going down. So we have two forces of gravity here, so let's call this one over here 1 and this one over here 2. And those are the uh, free body diagrams that we have. And, of course, this tension has to be equal to that tension because it's the same rope. Okay, so part B says now that we have to calculate the tension in the spring. So that should be relatively easy. If nothing's moving just yet, then we know that the tension on the, the 4 kilogram block, the, the lowercase m block, that has to be equal to the gravitational weight of that particular block because nothing is actually moving. So that means for part B, we could just say that the tension has to be equal to Fg2, which in this case would be lowercase m times gravity. And then uh, doing the calculation, that would be 4 kilograms multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, or, if you do the calculations, 39.2 newtons. And there's our tension. Okay, so that's part A and part B. So now I'm going to have to flip back and forth because I'm running out of space. So now let's move on to part C. So part C says calculate the force constant of the spring. Well, the force constant is the same as the spring constant. So we're looking at this spring. So what do we know about this spring? Well, it had an unstretched length of 0.2 meters, 0 0.2 meters. And then when we added this mass to it, it stretched to 0 0.25 meters. So that means its extension is 0 0.05 meters. That's how much it stretched. And it stretched due to the tension that we have right here. So if we take a look at Hooke's Law, that the force from the spring is equal to k times x. And yeah, it's a negative k times x, but uh, that's negative it just tells us a direction. And we also know that the force of the spring is equal to the tension. And that comes from the free body diagram here, force of the spring equals to the force of the tension. Then we can calculate k as just being... Uh, equal to the force of the spring, or tension, actually, let me put tension in there, divided by the extension of the spring. So that means it's 39.2 newtons divided by 0 0.05 meters, and when you do the calculation, you get a total of 784, and the unit for it would be newtons per meter. So that's part C. So that's really not simple harmonic motion. That's a review of some uh, Newton's Law stuff, some free body diagram stuff, and then a little bit of Hooke's Law. So now the string is cut. So the string is cut at point P. Okay, so the string is cut at point P, uh, leaving the 4 kilogram block to drop to the floor. So the, now it says calculate the time taken by the 4 kilogram block to hit the floor. Okay, well, we know it's in free fall now because it's no longer held up by the tension. So the only thing that we have is the acceleration is g, or negative 9.8. We know it follows a distance, in this case y, of 0 0.70 meters. So we can use our equation that we've used in the past to, uh, to simplify this, that t is equal to the square root of 2y over g, because we know our initial velocity in the y direction is 0 meters per second. 
So if you do that, it'd be square root of 2 times 0 0.7 meters over 9.8 meters per second squared, and you get a time of you get a time of 0 0.38 seconds. But we still haven't got the simple harmonic motion. That was just a review of kinematics. So let's start talking about E then. So E, calculate the frequency of oscillation of the 8 kilogram block. Well, there might be a couple ways that we can go about doing this, but the first one that pops into my mind is to take a look at uh, what's going on. So we have the, the block is a mass of 8 kilograms, and it's oscillating back and forth on a spring that we now know what the spring constant is. So we have an equation off the, uh, the equation sheet that says that the period of it is 2 pi times the square root of m divided by k. So we could calculate the period of it, or we could go straight to the fact that the period is 1 over the frequency, and that's really saying that frequency is 1 divided by period. So that can give us an equation that frequency is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k divided by m. It's the same thing, it's just 1 over it, right? 1 over the period gives us the same thing. So that means that we calculate this as 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k, which we got was 784 newtons per meter, I believe. Let me go back and check. 784, yep. And we're going to divide that by uh, m, which is 8 kilograms. And when you do this, you get 1.58 and what would be the unit for frequency? Well, period is measured in seconds, so this is inverse seconds, or we give it the name hertz, right? So oscillations per second, 1.58 oscillations per second. All right, so the next one. Calculate the maximum speed attained by the 8-kilogram block. Well, let's try to understand where the speed is coming from. So we have this uh, spring, and it's been stretched out by that point... 0, 0.05 meters, right? And we let it go. It's going to oscillate between uh, 0 0.05 meters and a negative 0 0.05 meters. It's just going to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay? So that means we know that right there in the middle we have our maximum velocity. Well, where does that velocity come from? Well, it comes from the fact that we have potential energy right here. Okay? So that means... If we did an energy bar chart, right, we would have initial all uh, elastic potential energy, which goes to all, which is all mechanical, but that's going to go to having all kinetic and all mechanical when it gets to the midpoint, and then it'll go back into all uh, elastic potential. So that means that our equations for potential energy, which is one half k x squared would have to be equal to the kinetic energy formula of 1 half mv squared. So the 1 halves will cancel, uh, and if we're looking for v, then we're going to divide by an m, and I have to square root the entire thing, so I'm going to see if I can get rid of some of the things that we have in the way, and that would make a v equal to the square root of kx squared over m. And if you plug in all the information, that would be 784 newtons per meter multiplied by 0 0.05 meters squared, all under the square root sign, divided by the mass, and the mass is 8 kilograms. So that gives you a velocity of 0 0.494, I mean you could probably round that up to 0 0.5 meters per second. So if we go back and just recap the problem, we had to do what? We had to do some Newton's laws, free body diagrams, figure out what forces were equal to each other. Using those Newton's laws and uh, free body diagrams, we could figure out what the spring constant was. Uh, after that, we were asked to do a, a short little kinematics problem to figure out how long it took for one object to hit the ground. Then we had to calculate frequency using our simple harmonic motion problem or questions or uh, equations. There we go. And then finally. We had to use simple harmonic motion, but in, in energy instead of uh, motion to or motion kinematic equations to figure out how fast something was moving. All right.